Today I'm going to be showing you how to know how long to cook chicken breasts in the Instant Pot from thawed or frozen. Hi, I'm Karen Peterson. I own the blog 365 days of crockpot.com. There I share slow cooker and instant pot recipes with you for every day of the year. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some information about how to know exactly how long to cook chicken breasts. Let's say you have those huge honkin' ones from Costco. Those are going to take a different amount of time than the thin ones. And what if they're frozen or what if they're thawed? Those are all going to take different cooking times in your pressure cooker. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks on exactly how to know how long to cook those chicken breasts so that you can get perfectly shreddable or sliceable chicken every time in your Instant Pot. Let's start by talking about frozen chicken breasts. I usually buy a big bag of chicken breasts at Costco or some other store and keep them in my freezer just for convenience sake. Now. Some of the chicken breasts are going to be huge. Like these ones are pretty big, right? Um, they're going to take longer to cook than the smaller organic chicken breasts. So decide how long to cook frozen chicken breasts. This is the method. You can use a scale. I can show you where I got it on Amazon in the link below. I zeroed out my scale and now I'm going to weigh the chicken breasts. So this individual chicken breast is 14 ounces. That's pretty big. So a good rule of thumb for frozen chicken breasts is one minute per ounce. So if I was ch cooking chicken breasts that were, that were about this size, I would cook them for 14 minutes. And that's to get sliceable, juicy chicken breasts. Now, if you want a shreddable chicken breast, you're gonna add three minutes to that time. So for shreddable chicken breasts, for like this one, which is 14 ounces, it would be 17 minutes. Pretty easy formula, and that works really well if you have a digital scale. If you don't have a digital scale, you might want to get one. They're not that expensive. Let's say you want to cook three chicken breasts. Well, does that mean I'm supposed to weigh all of them and cook them for, you know, 34, ounce, 34 minutes because it's 34 ounces? No, that's not right. What you do is you just take an average amount of the chicken breasts that you're adding in. One thing that I really encourage you to do is find chicken breasts that are the same width, that are about the same size. That way they'll all cook evenly and you won't get one that is still pink in the middle and one that's totally overcooked. That is a good rule to follow if possible. Find chicken breasts that are the same size. What if you freeze your chicken and it all freezes together in a big heap? I don't like to do that because it seems like that never works out well. Some parts are overcooked, some parts are undercooked. Just try to pry those chicken breasts apart before you add them into your Instant Pot. All right, now we know exactly how long to cook these frozen chicken breasts. Let me show you how. So you can either use a trivet. I have this one that came with my Instant Pot. This one I bought, which is like a sling and a trivet in one or you don't have to use any equipment at all. It's up to you. What you do need is a cup of water or broth. Pour that into your Instant Pot. And if you want to steam your chicken, then you would put the chicken on top of a trivet. If you want it braising in the liquid that you have in your Instant Pot, you can go ahead and put the chicken right into the bottom of the pot. Today, I'm gonna to steam mine, um, but it really is up to you on what you prefer. They taste really similar actually, so it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to use my sling and I will put these chicken breasts that are about 14 ounces each and if at all possible try to lay them in a single layer. If not possible what you do is you layer them crosswise like this on top of each other. So that's how I'm going to do it because they're pretty big. They take up a lot of surface area at the bottom of the Instant Pot. So I'm going to lay them crosswise. Now, I want to be able to shred these chicken breasts. So I'm going to use their 14 ounces each. So the average weight was 14 ounces. That's 14 minutes plus 3 minutes. So that's 17 minutes for shreddable chicken breasts. I'm going to use that, that formula for these chicken breasts. So I like to use the manual button and then just go down to 17 minutes. When the pressure cooking time is up, I like to use a natural release for five minutes and then move the valve to venting 
and open up the pot and get that chicken out and shred it or do whatever you want to use it for. I just took the chicken out of the pot and it is at an internal temperature about 171. So it is cooked through. These are ready to shred. While that's cooking, let me explain another frozen cooking trick to you. This is, let's say you're reading a recipe and it says that you're supposed to have uncooked chicken that's cubed or cut into bite-sized pieces. I have a lot of recipes on my website like this. For example, the Tuscan chicken pasta, or I just posted a recipe called chicken parm soup today, and it calls for thawed chicken that's been cut up into um, cubes. But let's say all you have are these big chicken breasts that are frozen. No worries. All you do is throw it into the Instant Pot, same thing here with the trivet on the bottom, the cup of water, for one minute. Then do a quick release, open up the pot, and use that chicken. It should be thawed and you can cut that up and use that in the recipe that calls for uncooked chicken that's been cut into cubes. That is my favorite thing to do and it's super easy and fast. So one minute pressure cook time to defrost your chicken. Now, the outside part of the chicken might look a little cooked, but the inside is still gonna be raw. Don't worry about it. You can use that in recipes that call for uncooked chicken. Sometimes chicken doesn't cook evenly and we worry about the inside of it not being done. Invest in one of these. It's an instant read thermometer. All you do is you stick it right in the middle of the chicken breast when it's done cooking or when you think it's done cooking and you just want to make sure that it's at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit and you're good to go. If not, you can always add another minute of pressure cooking time and the pot is already hot. It won't take that long to build the pressure again and you can, you can get the chicken to the right temperature. One thing that I really notice about especially frozen chicken is that there is a lot of liquid that comes off the chicken. So remember that when you're cooking something, there's gonna be a lot of liquid that's released. I find that it's about one cup per pound of chicken. So when we started this pot of cooking chicken, I put one cup of uh, water in the bottom, but when we're done, it's probably gonna be two or three cups of water because there was about two pounds of chicken in there. So it just releases a lot of liquid. Keep that in mind when you're making recipes with chicken. And keep that in mind when you're considering how much liquid to add to the recipe in the first place. The Instant Pot takes one to two cups of liquid usually to reach pressure. A lot of times my recipes just call for half a cup of chicken broth. How is that the case? Well, I'm considering the liquid that's coming off of the chicken and that will help bring the pot to pressure. Just poured the amount of liquid that was in the pot just into this measuring cup just to see how much it was. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's between two and three cups of liquid. So a lot of liquid came off that frozen chicken. What if you come home from the store and you have fresh chicken? How do these rules apply to that? Remember how I taught you that one ounce of chicken equals one minute of cooking time? That's exactly what you're going to do. So I'll show you an example. This one is a little bit smaller. This chicken breast is. So it's nine ounces. So if I was cooking it in the Instant Pot from frozen, I would cook it for nine minutes. But because it's fresh, well, let's pretend it's fresh, I would subtract two minutes. So it would be seven cooking, seven minutes of cooking time. Do you see why it's so important to choose chicken breasts that are the same uh, weight or same thickness? Because nine ounces is going to cook a lot faster than that 14 ounce honker that I put in there. Are you totally overwhelmed by all this information I shared with you and wish that you had it in a one page document? Don't worry, I've got you covered. I put the link below in my notes. Uh, if you're on a mobile device, go ahead and just click on the title of this video and it will pull up in all my notes where I share recipes and I, and I also share with you the printable page that you can print the information off, the cooking times for fresh, for frozen, for thickness, for weight, for all of that information. And you can just easily put that somewhere in your kitchen in a cookbook or uh, taped to your pantry or wherever you want it. So go ahead and get that resource today so you remember exactly how long you're supposed to cook chicken breasts. Thanks for joining me today. Hopefully this was helpful to you. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel and join our 365 Days of Instant Pot Recipes Facebook group. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.